What's going on everyone? Today we're gonna dive into one of the most controversial topics in the trucking industry, the best engines. From famous Detroit diesel engines to the beloved cats, let's take a look at some of these class eight engines that people look back at and say, they just don't make them like they used to. If you wanna keep up to date with the world of trucking, don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I'm talking from personal experience behind the wheels of these engines. The criteria taken into consideration for choosing the best engines includes engine costs, both long and short term, factoring in not just the price of the engine, but also fuel economy, repair frequency, and obviously, most importantly, performance. Now, it'll come as no surprise to the industry vets that this list is pretty heavy on cat engines. That being said, I should point out that there's no specific order to this list, as we figured it's probably best to leave it up to you all to battle it out in the comments section as to how these rank. All right, first up, we might as well start with a pretty much universal fan favorite, the 3406E from Caterpillar. Those who drive cat typically bleed yellow, and rightfully so in most cases. The 3406E first started being produced in 1993. The E model was the last of the 3406 line, with the 3406C being its predecessor. I know, weird, right? They made a 3406A, B, C, and then E. So I guess you could say, unlike your local lot lizard, Cat didn't want the D. Ironically, rumor has it that Caterpillar skipped the D in the series because their marketing department pointed out that there were too many negatives that could be associated with the letter D and people like myself would abuse that. Well, joke's on them because I found a way regardless. Anyways, the 3406E is regarded as one of the best engines that Caterpillar ever produced. It's a mechanical engine, which brings with it the famous reliability, but it also has the benefit of being an electric motor. It also helps that the 3406E was a pre-emissions engine, which is preferred by many drivers due to sensors constantly going faulty and the extra costs with a more advanced engine. Put simply, the more complicated the tech, the more things are likely to go wrong. This was such a renowned engine that most of the Peterbilt trucks made in the 1990s and early 2000s all had CAT 3406E engines in them. This engine is a four-stroke, six-cylinder inline with a displacement of 894 cubic inches. The 3406E uses a unit fuel injection and is turbocharged with a maximum power range between 375 and 465 horsepower. Next up is the E7 Mac. This engine is the backbone of the renowned Mack Bulldog fleet. The E7 was first conceptualized in 1988 by Mack and introduced a year later in 1989. The engine was produced for over 20 years, which is quite an impressive production run. Mack engines are known for their torque output, and this engine was no exception. They are workhorses in the industry applications, meaning most Mack enthusiasts measure power to the ground over high horsepower capabilities. Comparing a 400 horsepower cat engine to a 400 horsepower Mac would be like comparing cats to dogs. Mac's competitive advantage comes into play with the differentials and transmissions. These engines weren't built for speed, but for long-term durability. Typically, horsepower rating for the Mac E7 is between 250 and 400 horsepower. At the lower rating of 250 horsepower, the E7 will put out roughly 975 foot-pounds of torque. At its highest rating, it can boast an impressive 1,660 foot-pounds of torque. The original design featured a turbocharged air mount. However, after environmental regulations started finding their way into the industry, Mac swapped this for their patented Econovance variable injection timing system, which greatly increased fuel efficiency and lowered emissions. Pause one second. Are you interested in being a sponsor for one of our next videos? Do you have a product, app, or service that can benefit our North American truck drivers that you'd like to promote on our channel? With over 125,000 truck drivers across four platforms, 8.5 million views in the last 12 months, let our channel bring your product to life. Send us an email if you're interested in sponsoring one of our next videos. And now back to that video. Next on the list is the Detroit Diesel Series 60. Fun fact about this engine, John Deere helped with its development, and while some claim without Deere the engine wouldn't have been made, others debate how much influence he really had on design and development. The Series 60 became the best-selling diesel engine for Detroit Diesel. It was the first major diesel engine that opened the lead cam on the bigger bore. There are millions of Detroit Diesel Series 60 engines still on the road today, and it's extremely easy to remanufacture the Series 60 engines due to their unrestricted open source design. For 20 years, both Freightliner and Penske trucks all had exclusive contracts to include Series 60 engines in their trucks. 
This engine was a four cycle, six cylinder inline, turbocharged with fuel injection and could put up 515 horsepower. At its max torque, the Series 60 comes in just shy of the Mac E7 at 1,650 foot-pounds. Now, let's hop on over to the Cummins 855 Big Cam. This engine was the last real mechanical variable timing engine mass-produced by Cummins. This was the first engine by Cummins to meet the Clean Air Act and noise regulations of that time. There were four generations of the Big Cam 855 engines, which stopped being produced in 1985 and was replaced by the N14. The Big Cam had one of the largest camshaft diameters on the market at the time and could put up a whopping 605 horsepower. This was the main reason the engine outsold the small cam models. However, it did have lower torque than previously mentioned engines, coming in at 1,118 foot-pounds. Something worth pointing out is that these engines could often get up to 700,000 miles before needing an overhaul. Remember the previously mentioned 3406E from CAT? Well, let's throw the C-15 up on the list, which was a spin-off of the 3406E. Many of the parts are actually interchangeable between these two engines. Caterpillar first started manufacturing the C-15 engine in 1999 and didn't stop until 2007 when environmental regulations pushed the company out of the market. This engine was intended for both fleet and line haul use. The C-15 actually won the JD Power Award for highest in customer satisfaction with vocational heavy-duty diesel engines. Not just one, but six times. According to Caterpillar, C-15 engines are expected to have a lifespan of 1 million miles with CAT's recommended maintenance. The power rating of a C-15 when used in a truck or bus is 435 to 635 horsepower with a total torque output of 1,550 to 2,050 foot-pounds. Another common engine fondly looked back on by many is the Detroit diesel DD-15, which you'd expect after nearly five years and $1.5 billion were invested into the development of this heavy-duty diesel. The DD-15 displaces 14.8 liters and is a six-cylinder inline design. It was developed with the intention of North American truck and coach applications. The DD-15 launched in the second quarter of 2008 when it found its home inside Freightliner's Cascadia. One of the big selling points for the DD-15 was its Amplified Common Rail Fuel System, or ACRS for short. This tech creates the optimal combustion system which gives you the right torque at the right time. Its turbocharger and hollowed out dual overhead camshafts work in tandem to make the DD-15 rev up faster and accelerate quicker than older Detroit diesel engines, and allows for incredible performance. The DD-15 has a displacement of 906 cubic inches and offers a range of 455 to 505 horsepower with a torque range of 1,550 to 1,750 foot-pounds. If you wanted any idea just how influential the 3406 engine that we discussed earlier was on CAT's engine lineup, well, not only did the company use it as inspiration for the C15, CAT also made a V8 variant of the 3406. This was the CAT 3408. It was first introduced in the 1970s and discontinued around 1985. Although considered pricey at the time, it soon gained popularity. It definitely helped sales that it was commonly used for marine engines as well. One of the best selling features was the 3408's reliability, which is apparent because to this day you can still find countless listings for the CAT 3408, most of them being marked sold because of its many strengths. The life expectancy of the 3408 is roughly 16,000 operating hours, which is a little less than two years if the engine were to be running non-stop. The 3408 puts up 447 to 520 horsepower. Last but not least is, you guessed it, another cat, the C16, which is a bit of a cheat seeing as it's very similar to the C15 that was listed earlier. The main difference is that the C16 is a 15.8 liter and the C15 is a 14.6. Although, the pistons, liners, and crankshaft are different from one another as well. The C16 is commonly referred to as a beast and is a favorite by many despite the amount of stress it can put on your wallet at the pumps. This is because of gearing considerations that need to be addressed. The C16 offers a wide operating range and high torque rise which promotes the use of fewer transmissions with fewer gears. Even with this built-in feature, heavy and specialty haulers must remember their trucks should be geared to achieve the appropriate compromise between startability and desired road speed. Typically, loads of 80,000 pounds or less aren't as affected by improper drivetrain specs than heavy haulers, however, it's still something to keep in mind. The C16 puts up 575 horsepower with a peak torque of 1,850 foot-pounds. However, 
These engines are quite often modified, which according to a lot of those who have done so, is quite straightforward in order to get more horsepower. I debated throwing some of the engines that have been released in recent years onto this list, however, it seems as though everyone is in agreement that there are far too many issues with the sensors and other tech that have found their way into modern engines. But if you thought we missed any engines that deserve to be on this list, let us know in the comments below, and if enough pop up, maybe we can do a part 2 to this video. We'd love to hear how you also rank these engines in this video from best to worst. So here's a quick refresher. We went over CATS 3406E, 3408, C15 and C16, the Mac E7, Detroit Diesel's DD15 and Series 60, and the Cummins Big Cam. Well, that's all for me, folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with new content, and we'll catch you next time.